I'm receiving a ton of questions related to my input setup and how I do the kick-ass flying and steady camera shots. So here's a quick look at my dual stick setup and how this all translates in-game. I'm flying with two Verpal Constellation Alphas. Originally I purchased these for Elite Dangerous Odyssey just before it came out. And I'm not ashamed to tell you that they're seeing most of their usage right now, right here in Star Citizen. The quality of these sticks is absolutely amazing. As soon as you wrap your hands around them, you feel like you're operating heavy machinery or an expensive fighter jet. The buttons, the axes feel incredibly sturdy and the precision is beyond anything I imagined possible for a PC joystick. I typically always played with keyboard and mouse in Elite Dangerous and it took me a long time to make the transition but dual stick is the way. So the Aurora is parked on top of one of the tall buildings here in New Babbage. Join me on board and I'll show you everything there is to show you regarding my input and axis setup and how I manipulate the ship through space and atmo. While we are walking to the Aurora here, you can see a couple of widgets on screen. These widgets are going to show what my sticks are doing. The left square is the left stick and the right square is the right stick. And I'll go over what all the uh, widgets are showing you exactly and what my uh, axes are assigned to. Um, if you want to use this widget yourself, you can actually uh, find it in the description below. It's a very cool web tool that you can use and uh, you can customize what it looks like. And I tried to create something that looks like it belongs in the Aurora. So I'm going to start by going over the controls and we'll start with the right stick. I think everybody has this assigned the same way. I've got left and right for roll and we have up and down for pitching and then the Z axis, the twisting, is yaw. And additionally I have my analog pinky trigger which has a lot of precision for pushing the ship down. So moving over to the left stick, we have lateral thrusters and forwards and backwards. And then very important, again, the analog pinky trigger on this one is to go up. Very much like a helicopter's collective. This is the way it clicked with me in my brain. I have tried different setups, but this is the only way that I could sort of get it clicked in my brain. You, basically using the left stick as a WASD, if you would translate it again to a keyboard input. So I'm just hovering here for a second. You can see because we're flying decoupled that I'm obviously almost pushing full uh, vertical thrust up and that is sort of how we stay afloat. Let's move over to that building over there and I'll kind of show you the controls one at a time. You can see here there's very little inputs. I don't have to use any non-linearity because there is so much position with these verticals. I was doing a little bit of yaw there, tiny bit of pitching and mainly, uh, yeah, lateral movement and of course a lot of vertical thrust to stay afloat. So first, if we want to strafe, all I do is push the left stick, in this case to the right, we get a little bit of strafing motion and then I push to the left again to cancel the motion and uh, move to the left. Same thing for if we want to go backwards or forwards, here I'm pulling backwards on the stip, stick and then because we're decoupled I have to push forward to cancel that motion and that's what gives me the ability to fly so smoothly. You wouldn't really be able to do that with decoupled because as soon as you let go of the controls uh, the ship will use full power to steady itself. So let's try and go up. All I do is give full vertical, so that's my analog pinky trigger. And you could tell it, it goes pretty slow. Of course the Aurora doesn't really have a lot of power, uh, so it needs a lot. And then what I can do to stop it is I kind of just let go of the full pinky and catch myself again once it's steadied out. And it's great having all that precision too. Now because we're flying on a planet here, if I let go of my vertical thrust, we'll go down. So it's it's very easy to just let yourself fall if you want to go down. If you were in space, of course, you would have to use uh, negative thrust or down thrust. That's what I'm doing here. And you can see the descent is much more aggressive. Again, though, on a planet, you'll find yourself. You don't really need it that often unless you're sort of doing loopings or something like that. You could tell as well that trying to catch it with vertical thrust took a long time. Right stick now. Here you can see rolling actions and you can see on the input there's very little. If we'd be more aggressive with the roll, uh, it's a lot faster. Here's pitching. 
First pitching back, and then pushing forward to pitch forward. You can see I'm giving it very little input. Again, we can go aggressive too and get more out of it. With my left stick, I do whatever I think is necessary to sort of keep myself in one place. Here's yawing. You can see on the graphic, there's very little input for smooth control. And this can be difficult if you don't have a very precise joystick, so you might need non-linearity. But again, the Ripple is so precise that it works just fine using uh, linear inputs. Here's me showing off, combining some inputs to sort of strafe around the building. You can see there's some yaw, there's some back pitch. There is obviously vertical thrust and then there's a bit of forward thrust and a lot of sideway thrusting, lateral. Now you seem to be impressed by the way I was doing these landings in the previous videos. So here you can kind of see how I do them. I actually, <laughs> actually touch a little bit here because the Aurora just doesn't have that much vertical power. You can use boost to give yourself more boost, but I was trying for this little demonstration not to use it. Uh, but yeah, just look at the, 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 the inputs. You can see I'm using yaw, a little bit of roll, a little bit of pitch, lots of vertical power, and again, whatever lateral I need to go where I want to. And then using that technique, you can do some really precise movements. Here I am doing the same thing I was doing around the building, but now uh, around this little antenna. And at some point, you, like I can imagine looking down at the graphics, it might be a little confusing, like, Jesus, there's so much happening. But it becomes very intuitive when you do it a lot. It's like flying a helicopter, uh, but then easier because you've got lateral inputs as well and you don't have that on a helicopter, of course. Now, the next thing I want to show you blew my mind because I've been looking for a six degrees of freedom space game with proper aerodynamic flight modeling. And I don't think there has been one before Star Citizen. So here we are in a cruise, if you will. We're still flying decoupled. Uh, left stick is all the way forward and I'm having enough vertical thrust to keep myself flying straight. Now you might think if I wanted to go up, I would pull on the right stick to give myself some pitch up. But instead, this is what happens if I give full vertical power it obviously pushes on the bottom of the ship and pushes the nose up. If I release vertical power, it goes negative and lets me fall down. So if you want to do really smooth adjustments, you don't even need to use the right stick. All I'm doing is more or less vertical power to go up and down. And that, I, I didn't consider that until I flew Star Citizen. Now the same thing can be done for yawing. Instead of using right stick yaw input, which would cause a lot of sort of laggy inputs, I can push right on the left stick and give myself thruster power to push my ship into a yaw. So now I'm going to push the stick to the left and you can see I start yawing to the left because obviously there's thrusters uh, pushing on the right side of the ship, pushing outwards. Typically, if I fly that way, I will combine it with some rolling. So first I will roll into a turn and then give myself some lateral move, like lateral thruster power. And there is no smoother way to fly. Uh, I, I love the vector indicator here as well, by the way, because it shows me that I'm slightly descending below zero degrees there. So you can pull up on the stick at the same time a little bit to keep the vector indicator from having too much sink. And you can see in those turns, typically, I, I need more vertical power as well, just to make sure I don't descend. Just it, it blew my mind that a lot of calm, or what would you call it, a lot of uh, gentle flying you can do with the left stick, and, and you don't need a lot of rolling or yawing uh, to make small adjustments. That blew my mind. thought I would share that. So for the next bit, I'm going down low just to show off a little bit more some rotational uh, flight around some trees. And then I want to talk to you and demonstrate how I do use coupled mode uh, to do some very convenient things.
All right, so here we are steady and I'm just sort of steadying myself. Again, you can see I'm pushing on the pinky trigger on the left stick a lot to keep myself afloat. That's very important for this little bit. If I just need to take my hands off the controls or whatever, there you go. Coupled mode engaged and now you can see on the control inputs, I have released vertical thrust. I don't need to do anything right now to sort of stay afloat. Right stick still behaves the same way with rolling and yawing. But left stick, you don't need to do anything. Now, I don't like flying that way because it feels a lot harsher. Here you can see what I mean by that. If I gently push forward or back on the left stick, because I'm in coupled mode, instead of giving, let's say, 5% power, uh, it's actually trying to force myself to a certain speed, depending on what you set as your speed limit. And I don't have a speed limit set because I fly decoupled. Uh, and it would just add a lot of extra work. You can hear it by the thruster noises as well. So while right stick is still very nice, left stick is very aggressive with coupled mode on. And that is also typically why people that are flying with coupled mode are jumping forwards and backwards and left and right a lot more aggressively. With coupled mode off, you don't struggle. Here you can see I push forward on the stick and then it just sort of keeps floating. Now because we're in an atmosphere, it does slow you down a little bit until at some point you'll become stationary, but in space you wouldn't. Check out the vector indicator as well, by the way. You can see it's slightly up and then sort of slightly going down and playing up and down there. That gives me an impression as well if whether I'm going up or down, beside obviously the obvious visual cue outside the window. The next thing to talk about, I guess, is boost works a little different from Elite in a very pleasant way. Um, you can see when I boost by looking in the center widget there. Here I boost because I was falling too fast and I just needed a little bit of extra power so I can hold down the boost button and it'll give me that extra bit of power. Here I'm demonstrating it again. I want to go on the left building but I let myself sink too far. Now I'm boosting and because I'm boosting I get extra power. The cool thing about boosting in Star Citizen, I've mentioned this before, it works in whatever direction that you're pushing your th thrusters. So if you press boost but you don't click anywhere, nothing happens. It can go in reverse, it can go forward, lateral, up, down, it can go wherever you need it. Currently in the release version of, uh, of Star Citizen, or I guess the test version, um, you have heat, that is the limiting factor. But in the uh, next version coming, there is going to be an actual boost capacitor. A little bit more like Elite, which is cool. Um, but yeah, you're not stuck to like a boost timer. You can just press it and it goes for as long as you hold it. And you don't need to do like a cargo scoop gimmick to limit how much forward thrust you get from the cargo or from the boost. You can just let go of forward and it'll just boost in the other direction that you're looking for. You saw that gentle nudge there, by the way. I was obviously using boost uh, to stay afloat there. And the gentle skidding uh, across whatever you're hitting is, is very enjoyable in Star Citizen. Because it feels more like a scuff than uh, the shield banging in Elite. There's definitely another reason why I would use coupled mode. Let's say I'm trying to get to the spaceport there in the distance. It can be quite annoying having to constantly hold thruster power, right? So just turn on coupled mode, full cruise control, and you can do stuff like this. Just get out of your seat and your ship will keep going. I so love that the ship, you know, doesn't turn off or whatever when you get out of your seat. It's got the engines going, it's got coupled mode on, cruise control on, it'll just go. And I love it. I have it set up on my joystick where with one hat switch on my index finger on my left stick I can turn on and off coupled mode and cruise control so it's literally the flick of a switch to go coupled uh, and, and cruise. Very nice. If there is an interest from people uh, that I go over the actual individual buttons you'll have to tell me. I'd be happy to do it but personally I feel like it's kind of irrelevant. Um, everybody has their own preference and yeah, do you really need to go over individual buttons, you know? And because you were all enjoying the landing so much, here is my typical way of approaching these 
quote unquote uh, difficult and challenging landing base. I, I like to come in from an angle like that because you can look down at where you're going and having all that precision on the, the ripples really helps to do it gently. You can tell lots of vertical thrust and lots of lateral here and there. And there's a gentle touchdown. Next up, people were asking me how I do some of the very smooth panning shots. And it is very much the same way. I'll keep the widgets on screen, of course. Here we are, just in coupled mode. I have a preset for this camera angle where it is already zoomed in and in the right place. So I just turned off coupled mode, so we're now decoupled. And yeah, I just kind of do what I've already been showing you. You can just uh, see me do it here. I've got a lot of, actually, I'm full lateral to the right which kind of pushes my ship to the right, to yaw to the right, so I have to counter yaw to the left. And uh, I use a little bit of roll to keep the ship steady and vertical power wherever I want it, whether it's an ascending or descending shot. And then, uh, yeah, I do <laughs> what I enjoy doing. Do you see that building down to the right, that little tower? Something I like to do a lot, we'll switch screen here. I like to use shots with some kind of parallax motion, which means that you have stuff in the foreground and stuff in the background. And then when you move, they will move across the screen at di different speeds because of their distance to your camera. And that's a really nice way to just add a lot of stuff to look at to the shot. Oops. This is one of those lovely Star Citizen Atmo moments where you're just giving too much reverse thrust and you end up snapping the ship in the other direction. All right, so here we are. The, the game saves the preset camera position that I was in. Just turned off decoupled mode, or sorry, I went into decoupled mode. I set up my starting angle here. I start lateral thrusting to the left. Uh, right now I'm also yawing to the right as a result, again to counter. Uh, a little bit of roll to keep it steady. And here you have lots of objects in the distance and lots of objects close to the lens, giving lovely parallax panning. The metro loop coming into view there into pan is also really nice. Just lots of things to look at. And yeah, you can see at the widgets what I'm what I'm doing. And because I'm me, here's more showing off. Again, the gentle tapping, it's, uh, I just enjoy it so much. I, I didn't do it on purpose. I, I always kind of underestimate the, the weak lateral, sorry, the weak vertical thrusters on the Aurora. I, I typically try and save it with a little bit of boost, but for these shots, I'm trying to be smooth and then I kind of undercompensate, I guess. I think that's about all there is to show you. This video already is lasting just as long as the <laughs> episode 4 uh, about cities. Typically just showing things off like this can take a while. So if you stuck it this far, congratulations and thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and uh, I look forward to all your beautiful comments in the next video.